Amen. Good morning to the Sabbath School. We do praise the Lord for blessing us to come together. Recording in progress. To come together again. We honor the Lord for his goodness unto us. And whether you are joining us on Zoom or whether you're in the congregation or whether you are on Facebook, we thank the Lord for you choosing to be a part of our Sabbath School. We praise God for his goodness unto us. Uh, God has certainly blessed us, and I can hear echo. God has certainly blessed us, and we thank the Lord for that. We praise God for another time he's allowed us to come together to study his word. And we honor him. I see that our elder Brands has joined us, and we thank God for his presence today. Um, Deacon Preston will um, elaborate a little further when I turn it over to him. We honor God for our pastor. Man. We thank God for our Lady Jan, our Apostle James, our pastor, our Lady Jan. Thank God for you, the people of God, for the Lord has been good unto us. Amen. He has protected us all week long, and, and for this we are glad. This is his appointed time that he's allowed us and asked us to honor his Sabbath, and we thank him for it. So at this time, I'm going to move out of the way and turn it over into the hands of our teachers and um, Deacon Preston and our Apostle James. Hey, hey man, happy Sabbath. I want to do a quick test. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. My mic. All right, well, let's see. Is that better? That's right. much better. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. We'll, we'll go that way and... Uh, I'm excited today to have with us our elder David Brand, and, and, and like I've said before, uh, we like to have the writers of our Sabbath school lessons join us for Sabbath school uh, so they can engage with us for the first 10 or 15 minutes of our Sa Sabbath school lesson. It's always good when you can have the writer of the lesson share their thoughts, uh, because I think as you prepare a lesson, there's a lot that goes into it, and so uh, many of you know uh, our our elder Brand is uh, is a professional in the psych, uh, psychology field. He does a great job in uh, the content that he provides. And so we'll give him some time as we go through what we typically like to go through in our lesson. So when we think about this lesson, I can relate. And we're going to spend some time digging into that today so we can have some conversation around that. I personally want to extend a thanks to those who did Sabbath school last week while we were on the road to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Amen. We took time to go visit our Bishop Jerry Carter. Uh, and, and I just want to share this. If you've never had, and most of us have had the opportunity to interact with our Bishop Carter, the one thing I didn't know is Bishop Carter is from Cincinnati. So I never knew that, um, that he was from Cincinnati. Uh, we talked about his upbringing under uh, Bishop Campbell and, and just the work he did in the church. Uh, and he has been pastoring since he was 21 years old. Uh, and that was amazing to me. I think he said he's coming up on 40, his 45th pastoral anniversary. And so I was just unbelievably impressed with spending time with him. He and Lady Carter send their love to the saints here in Gordonsville. Amen. So we thank God for them. And again, I want to extend my thanks to Sister Charmaine and others who took care of the Sabbath school class while I was away. Before we jump into what we typically like to go through, I always like to give our Apostle Raglan an opportunity to welcome the saints, and then we will actually go through uh, just really our preliminaries, and then we want to interact with our elder, David Brand. So with that, Apostle, God bless you. We can't hear him. I guess. Can now. I guess you couldn't. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> we thank God again for uh, Digging Preston. Um, have God blessed him and his family to travel back uh, to Virginia. And we thank God for our sister Charmaine White, the Sabbath School Superintendent. We thank God for our, our youth 
teachers and for having those classes on this morning and you the people of God that is making your way and we're looking for just a blessed time in Sabbath school and throughout the entire day we, if the Lord bless we have our saints coming from other places to join in with us I want to say um, to um, Elder Brand we thank you for joining in we thank you for taking the time because we know you are a Sabbath school teacher for the class in Lachlan so we thank God for you stepping away for a while just to share with us your thoughts as you wrote this lesson God bless you to everyone and good morning Amen Saint. so we, we want to thank you for again joining our Sabbath school lesson as we like to typically do we go through um, just really some things that are really important to us from the standpoint of welcome you to the house of God. Mm -hmm. We always say this, uh, welcome to the house of God, for we are a Christ-centered, Bible-based church that endeavors to teach the truths of God and have a positive impact on our community by demonstrating the love of Jesus Christ. And so that's so critically important to us as we have this conversation about demonstrating God's love. And when we talk about his love, we say his love is his holy disposition toward all that he has created that compels him to express unconditional affection and selective correction to provide the highest and best quality of existence both now and forever for the objects of his love. Uh, we can't thank you enough for your continued engagement with us from the standpoint of inviting people to be a part of Sabbath School, whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're on Facebook Live, whether you're on Zoom. We appreciate how you engage with us uh, through all of our medium, and we personally want to thank you. We encourage you, invite people this year. Continue to invite people to engage with us uh, because our, our desire is that they would watch each week, that you would like us on Facebook, you would share our information with your family and friends, and if you haven't, um, you know how to, to share on Facebook at House of God VA. And then, before I turn it over to Elder Brand, one of the things we really like to make sure that we do consistently as we get closer to God and study God's Word, we use this three-question framework that helps us in that area. What does it say? So this observation, as we study the Scripture, the observation piece, and then what does it mean? What's the interpretation of that? And then, I believe the most important is, what does it mean to me? What is that application that I've got to make sure that I get that we apply this weekly in our lives so we can be better uh, believers and followers of Christ? And so as we think about this lesson today, I can relate. Uh, we are so happy to have Elder David Brand. So Elder Brand, and many of you know, he's also a national officer in the house of God. And so we thank God for him. And so I want to just welcome Elder David Brand to our Sabbath school. And elders, you were writing this lesson and you think about um, for us today, what are some of the things you definitely want to make sure that we take from this lesson today? God bless you, Elder. God bless you, man. We love you, Uncle James, Apostle Ryan. Bless you, sir. For all of the uh, family and friends in Cobham, uh, it is our privilege and honor to join you this morning. Um, and thinking about the lesson, um, I wrote a couple of notes that I want to share um, in regards to the lesson and how I want you to receive and think about the lesson and um, why it is uh, valuable, why it is pertinent, why it is valid today. Um, the Bible, the Bible, um, think of the Bible as a love narrative centered around relationships. Uh, all throughout the scripture, um, it is talking about relationships from the very beginning to the very end. It is full of instances where people were relating to uh, a holy God and the holy God was relating to people and teaching them how to relate to each other and relate to him. Second point, the law points out clearly what love and devotion is. Uh, the law lets us know that um, 
we have two main obligations on the earth that it is to love God and that is to love our fellow man and it so happens that all of us as human beings need support need help need to learn how to do both of those things we understand that we cannot give God anything he will not just accept anything uh, he is a holy God, and he tells us how to worship him. And, and, and jumping into and, and trying to worship him, he gives us explicit instructions on how he wants it done. And in those instructions, he basically, uh, to borrow a very famous book, he gives us his uh, love language. And the love languages are um, a powerful way to kind of formulize uh, how people need to be loved individually, right? And that teaches us how we as people love our spouses, our children, excuse me, um, our spouses, our children, family, friends, each person needs something different from us. And, and the lesson is teaching us that we have everything we need to love people well. Hmm. The question is, do we have the strength? Do we have the courage? Do we have the desire? Do we have the patience to fulfill um, this important task? Um, I'm going to come back to that point. Um, the third point is people need safe places on earth, right? That, that is what the relationship is. It is the safe place on earth. Um, people think of us, we think of them. Um, and, and at least at the next point, um, when people have, when they need an SOS or a crisis, um, they call us and uh, we know that uh, according to Hebrews, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. But also after I get done praying, when I do pray, um, who, whose voice do I call on earth to bring me comfort, to bring me me strength to um, help me to calm down. Um, who makes me laugh, right? And people need that on earth. We thank God for Jesus, but we also understand that um, people also call us when they need us. And we as a people of God, we, we hold that space for people and we allow them access to us. And and that is, that is healing in itself for people to know that um, they are cared about, they are loved, and they are thought about um, on earth by others. Um, the next point, we as the people of God are not part of the cancel culture. Um, we operate in love, we operate in kindness, we operate in forgiveness, understanding that just because you make a mistake, um, you know, I'm not, going, I'm not going to fall out with anybody over $20. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to create conflict with people over minimal things. I'm going to be a mature adult, understand that people make mistakes. My children make mistakes. I haven't been perfect uh, all my life. And I thank God for that because that gives me the space to understand others, right? So when people fail and they do, when people fall and they will, I'm, I'm still there, I'm still Is he muted? Yeah, I think I think our elder brand froze on us a little bit. 
Um, but Apostle, he said something, and when he gets back, I, I just wrote it down that I think we can touch on. That's the point. Okay. Uh, Elder, Elder, you went out a little bit on us because of your bandwidth, but I do want to touch on a point that you mentioned that Apostle and I want to touch on, and I'd love to hear some more thoughts on that um, before we wrap up this segment. You talked about we are not a part of the cancel culture. So mm -hmm. I want to think about, I want us to, re and, and, and Elder, I think that's such a great point to say we are not a part of the, the cancel culture because we see that a lot. We, we hear that a lot. We watch people be canceled. And so, Apostle, I love your thoughts on that as Elder Brand brings that up into this topic. I can relate. Um, why is it that the saints should be a part of that? So can you help me understand that? And then, Elder, I want to hear from you. We are not a part of anything that this world offers. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. You know, the, the world evolves and, and things present themselves, and yet we live in this world, but we are not citizens of this world. Mm. See, if I'm a citizen of this world, then that makes me a part of everything that goes on. Yes, I'm, naturally I am, but spiritually I'm not. My citizenship is with Christ, and because my citizenship is with Christ, I'm not a part I may be affected by it. It may have an uh, impact on my life, but I'm not a part of anything that this, this culture that this world offers. I, I like that. And, and Elder, you mentioned that, that we're not a part of the cancel culture. And then you talked about just being mature as we think about relationships. So can, can you expound, expand on that a little bit when you think about, and you said you've not always been perfect, and that maturity piece. So talk to us about that and why that's so important in this lesson I can relate. Um, yes, sir. And, and by all means, if I began to go out or fluctuate, please jump in and, and flag me down. Um, people, we have been taught, right? We've been taught through the scriptures, the idea of perfection. And too many times we get stuck there. So when people struggle, the idea of perfection um, causes us to be hard, causes us to not forgive, mm. causes us to hold grudges. Um, and basically cancel culture is what's happening in the world now where anytime somebody makes a mistake, uh, either willingly or um, by accident, People say, well, I'm done with them forever. Okay. Throw, them, throw them away, right? Uh, throw the whole person away. I'm not going to support anything else they do. And you think about in the scriptures, right? All of the people, think about Jonah. <laughs> think about Moses. Think about David. Uh, Adam and Eve, right? Think, <laughs> think about Satan, right? He got kicked out. And the scripture says the reason he's so upset with us is because why? Um, we have multiple opportunities to serve a holy God. He messed up one time and, and was, you know, cast out forever. And here, here we are, D. Here we are, Apostle. And sometimes we have bad days, bad weeks, and God still loves us and chooses us and he he extends grace and mercy and those are the things that the saints need to focus on right the grace and the mercy aspect of relationships if you don't have grace and mercy nobody can relate to you because now you are on this pedestal of cannot be touched, cannot be seen, cannot be experienced. You know, Elder, you said um, that, and now that you gave up that $20, and I, uh, <laughs> falling out over $20, that speaks to a oh. level of maturity. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about maturity. $20, am I going to fall out with you over $20? Um, if I do, people do that all the time. People fall out right. for less than that. But, it's, but as saints of God, it says something about our maturity when I fall out with you over $20. Now, you owe me $20. That doesn't change that. But how I deal with you as a result of you owing me $20 have a lot to say about my level of maturity. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. And I think the, part, the sad part is we have this mentality, I'm not going to let anybody get over on me. 
Mm -hmm. But I take the, um, and I say this all the time, when I know what you're doing, you're not getting over on me. I choose to allow you to to do the thing that you're doing. And we have lost relationships because we didn't want somebody to get over on us when God has uh, given it to us to be the bigger person, to give it to us to be the one to handle that situation better. Yeah, and so, so Elder, I know there's a lot more that you can share, and we want to jump into the lesson, but before we just wrap up this segment, first, I want to personally thank you for joining us today, for your insights. I just made some notes that I think are really impactful that we're going to put in throughout the lesson today, but before we wrap up this, this portion of Sabbath School, Elder, is there just any nugget you want to share with us before we jump into the meat of this lesson? And again, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Absolutely. Um, the spirit enables us all the necessary skills to master relationship, mm. right? The right. Holy Ghost. That's it. Gives us everything we need to master relationships. And if you go down and you open up the fruit of the spirit, those definitions help us do relationships better. Last two points. Um, When we think of the legends, right? I can remember um, my apostle chief, Bishop Scott, and I know I've seen Bishop Scott, his relationship with another legend, the Apostle Randolph Raglan. Um, Both of these men had people skills. Both of these men managed effectively and they got they got the 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 skill set to be legendary, right? And people always remember them because of how they made them feel, right? Their experiences with them will live on forever. Uh, My wife and I talk about how one one weekend we were, I feel like we were in Fort Wayne maybe and Apostle Raglan and Mother Raglan was there, and Lady Raglan told us, we never forget, Lady Raglan told us the story about a kid on the line running back and forth, <laughs> and it made us laugh, but it was like Apostle and Lady Raglan sitting to this young couple talking and laughing, and we never forgot that, yeah. you know, and that's, that's something, that's something, it's very critical for us to understand that people remember how you make them feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially those of us who profess Christ, because people are looking for the comfort, people are looking for the laugh, people are looking for the strength, and we should be giving that to people in um, our interactions. So we thank God again for the opportunity to join you guys. We, we love you guys so very much. We have very fond memories of, you know, our family and friends in Cobham and even, you know, how we met, uh, tell a story all the time, the youth conference in Tennessee. And I'll, I'll never forget that because Uncle James, you know, treated me like he saw me as, as a young man. And we met all our friends, Terrence and Twilight and different ones. And that's part of my story now. Amen. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that. We weren't, we weren't too to whatever, to have a good time. We had a good time, and that was that. So I thank God. I thank God. Amen. I love y'all. Elder, we love you, and thank you for being yes, a part sir. of our yes, Sabbath sir. School. Thank you. Like I said, one thing we want to do is continue to bring our writers to you so you can see their perspective as they write lessons and they have thoughts about lessons. So we definitely are grateful for that as we look at it. So here's what we're going to do as we think about this. This lesson is I Can Relate. And so we're going to dig into some things around relationships. And so we're going to jump pretty quickly. So go with me to Genesis chapter 2, 18, chapter 2, verse 18. We're going to jump there. And I I want to use this from a standpoint of uh, making sure we understand relationships. And this is a very familiar passage of Scripture. 
So we all know this, but I want you to pay particular attention to what it says, and we're going to jump through some of these things. Um, and it says in verse chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, what? It is not it is good. what? Not good that the man, that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And so the reason I share this scripture is this is the first time in the Bible God says something's not good. So think about that. And it's in the context of relationship. Yes. It's in the context that when, when Adam is, is looking around, uh, he sees that everything else has companionship. Mm -hmm. Everything else has relationship. And God looks at it and says what? It is not what? Good. Good that man should be alone. But you see in this passage, I mean, you never see in this passage where Adam complained. About? Not being alone. Okay. But, but being alone. So why is that important? It's important because whatever state we're in, the scripture says what? Be content. That's right. Whatever state you're in. And I think that's just a little segue that I want to, you know, say that what, um, there are people today that are, desire somebody in their that's life. That's right. That's right. And uh, we have a God have you, have along, he have you there. Be content. That's right. No, it's not good for you to be alone, but God got somebody for you. Yeah, and I, I love that point, Apostle. And I think what it's, what's really important for us as we think about this lesson, I can relate. We are never supposed to be, God never intended us uh, to be an island to ourselves. Right. And so whether you're in singleness, uh, the value of friendships, I think one of the things that's been striking about the pandemic has been the amount of loneliness. Um, some people are dealing with being alone. So you think about whether it's elderly people that live by themselves or they live with someone or just this sense of isolation. Even the scripture talks about, you know, we need to be mindful of that as we think about the power of our relationships and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. The next scripture I want you to just jump to, and then I'm going to get you to interact with me, is Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Um, and again, this may not necessarily be that familiar of a scripture to you, but it's Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And so when you look at this, this scripture... I want you to just pay particular attention to this as we look at it. And this is what it says. Two are better than what? One. One. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he have not another to help him up. So again, the value, the connection of uh, relationships, and I saw someone put it in uh, the Zoom chat, uh, God, God's design is not for us to be in isolation. And yeah. as we think about this lesson, and we're going to dig into some of the, the highlights that our elder brand put into the lesson, uh, I want us to be mindful of those first two scriptures as we jump through it. So here's where I need your help as far as, uh, as we think about interaction. I want you to talk to me. From the standpoint of when you think about a good relationship, whether it's a good friendship, whether it's a good marriage, whether whatever type of relationship it is, I want you to tell me, what are some key elements to a good relationship? And let me just say this. If you're in the audience, uh, we have a mic uh -huh. that we'll get. If you raise your hand, we'll get the mic to you so you can be able to, I, to, to interact. I actually have a question. Yep, please. This is... Um, um, Kina, yep. I recently um, had not an argument, not an argument, but just kind of like a discussion. discussion on, yeah, discussion on, is that scripture where it talks about men dwelling, a man dwelling alone? Is that specific to a man or does that, or was he speaking of mankind? Because the person kind of made the, the argument that it was dealing with a man and how men you know it's not good for a man to dwell alone but kind of where do we see women and women kind of taking on the perspective of the, the description ever cited that they be with someone they it, that it's cited that a man shouldn't dwell alone kind of <laughs> well, speaking know, to how i kind of 
So I I know it sounds I know it may sound strange, but good question. I I've been I I mean I've been struck like that's been a, a, something that I've never heard before, and so I just kind of wanted to know wh- like where does that come from? Like, and is that the truth? It kind of like can I have some like scriptural reference that that's not what that means? Let me go back to um, Genesis. Where Deacon Preston read the um, scripture in Genesis chapter 2, where it says it's not good for man to be, be alone. Tell me in that scripture, where was the woman? She had not been brought forth yet. So that scripture was definitely referencing the man, because the man was the only human being at that time when that scripture was made. See, people want to twist God's word to suit down what they want. There are men that want, they feel that they can have multiple and they'll use, they'll dig in and find some scripture reference that said that, well, I shouldn't be alone if you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. I can get me somebody else. I can have two or three. That's what, what, that what man is trying to twist and divert God's word to speak to what they want to do. But that, it, that scripture they're quoting kills everything they're saying because there was no woman. That's why God made the statement. He said, I want you to be alone, Adam. I want you to have somebody. Yeah, good, good call out, Apostle. Um, Sister Keena, did that clarify for you? Um, yeah, so you're say, saying that um, it, it's not just about men. It, it was said because it was said specifically because he was alone. Right. Not to say that only men don't need to be alone. Well, it's, it's, and, and Sister Keena, go look at uh, what he just read yeah, in Ecclesiastes chapter yeah. 4. It didn't say that the man would lift the woman. Or the woman will lift a man. Yeah. It says what? Two. If they fall, yeah. one of them will lift the other one. It did, it, there was no gender attached to that. This scripture supports um, the back to Genesis is saying that, look, whoever you are, man or fe- male or female, you shouldn't be alone because you're going to need somebody to lift you. Yeah. And okay. then, so, yeah, yeah, I hope that uh, further yeah. helped. So yeah. it's, 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 it's genderless. Yeah, so Keena, I think your question's a good one, but I, I, that's the reason you put in Ecclesiastes, that scripture in Ecclesiastes. It's not gender specific. It is simply about the key and power of relationships, that we can be helpers one to another, okay? And so that's, that's the thing we want to really bring out in this lesson. I can relate. One, uh, God's intent is for us. And when I say alone, this is not talking about marital relationships. This is yeah. really about as social beings, mm-hmm. God always intended for us to connect the connectivity. And that's why this lesson, I believe, is so important. And Sister Brenda um, Bishop makes a good point in the, in the Zoom, I mean, in the um, Facebook ch- um, chat. She said, being alone and being lonely are not the same. That's right. You can be in a room full of people and be lonely. You know, so that's what they need to have somebody to interact with. Uh, How many of you call the same person every day? How many of you talk to somebody, you know, not two or three days go by that you don't interact with that person? That person's in your circle for a reason. That person is to help you um, socially to get through life. And you need that. Um, you talking about the digging press, we're talking about the pandemic earlier. I remember when I was in the workforce, there were people that, uh, they lived by themselves. They didn't have a lot of people to interact. They look forward to coming to work. Sick or well, they're going to come to work. Why? Because that was a highlight of their day. Not to work itself, but being around people. Because when they got back home, there was nobody. Yeah, that's good. And, and this pandemic, that's why so many people committed suicide during this pandemic. That's, right. that's why so many people, the um, mental issues created during this, this time, because they missed that interaction. Yeah, that's good. So, Keena, I appreciate your question. And so I'll circle you back to when you think about, and I see some people putting things in the chat, what are the keys to really good relationships? When you think about characteristics, so I'm seeing this, uh, Michael Hamner puts in there, a good relationship, trust and confidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm looking at the chat where Sister Brenda Draper says communication is key. Uh, what else? When you think about good relationships, what are some of the things that are really important? Give her them, uh, Sister Brenda. See that, um, Sister Edith, get the mic. Uh, Sister Jackie says trust, and that is that is so true that we've got to make sure that we can 
trust people. That's and the right. reason I want to bring this out is I think it's so important for us to understand and have an expectation of what we want out of relationships. That's right. Because a lot of times, if you don't understand or have an expectation of what you want out of relationships, you will accept any relationship. Mm-hmm. So I have a saying in my office that says, set the standard. Yes. And right. so the reality is you have to set the standard for what you're going to accept in a relationship. You have to set the standard on what you're not going to accept in a relationship. And if you don't set the standard, guess what? Someone else will set the standard yes. for you. Right. So I want to make sure today that we level set some to make sure as the people of God, here's some just some things I expect when I'm in a relationship with somebody. Right. So go, go right ahead. Thank the Lord for my relationships. And I thank the Lord because God gives me those he knows mm-hmm. that I need in my life. I don't choose people. God chooses them for me. And they are deep and strong, and we have a deep love and respect for one another, and we have a deep communication. With me, I need communication, (laughs) and that's all I've known, communication. My mother and I communicated. I have a son, communication, and and that's a part. I want to know what you're thinking, what you're feeling. What, you know, whatever is about it. So I just thank God for working in my life for the ones I know, because I have been a very sheltered, timid person. And I thank the Lord because this has helped me to come out and be able to reach out. And I thank the Lord because I'm feeling you need me and I sure need you. That's right. You know, one of the things that people have talked about uh, in the chat, it keeps saying, I, I keep saying trust. Why is trust is so important? Because... Um, I got sensitive information. I have personal information that I want to share with somebody. But if I can't trust you, that's right. Then now, come on. If I can't trust you, that kills my relationship because I got something I need to get off my chest. I need to, you know, have a sounding board. I need to share it, and I need to know that it's going to stay there. That's right. So um, I think Sister Tim, you know, Sister Brenda got her. And we thank God for our uh, evangelist to me being here in this sanctuary with us today. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Uh, I was thinking reciprocity is really important, that you don't want there to be a relationship where only one person is doing all the That's giving right. and there's never any receiving. So I think reciprocity is really important really in a is. relationship. Amen. So it's amazing. You and Myra must have this mental connection because that's what oh, she no, put in. I mean, I <laughs> that's what she put in the Zoom <laughs> chat is reciprocity. So, so here's some things I just want to share that, that as I was preparing that I kept seeing around relationships. So keys to quality relationships, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, from this lesson, I can relate. I want to just tie it into some of these things that I, as I was researching and preparing for the lesson, that stood out and were extremely consistent. So guess what the first one was? Trust. Yes. I've got to be able to trust you That's right. if I'm in a relationship with you. Okay? The other one was listening. I've got to be able to listen, and this concept of listening is not only listening, but I also want to make sure I feel heard, that when I'm in a relationship, and then we're going to, I want to tie this to our relationship with God, but I also want to make sure we tie it to our relationship with each other. Mm-hmm. Elder Brand said something, and you may have missed it, he talked about, you know, it's good that we have all this around Jesus, and, G- and that's right, and, and Jesus is the focal point. But we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the arms and That's legs right. of That's Christ. Right. And so the only way someone can sometimes experience the love of God is they get loved by me. That's right. And so I want us to be mindful of that. So I've got trust, listening, love, commitment. Um, a lot of time. And so here's the thing that we're seeing culturally now, not even... Uh, I would say this is among uh, just non-believers, but I see it more with believers, is that people jump in and out of relationships. Yeah. But the reality is, if you're in a relationship, it takes commitment to stay in a relationship. That's right. Any of us who've been in relationships, you call it what you want. There's come a point in time where you said, I can walk away from this. I could have been potentially off better by myself, but guess what? You stay because you were committed. And then at the end, it's open communication. 
So as we think about that, and again, this isn't an exhaustive list, so there may be other things that people have that they, you know, that you say, well, this is something that's important in a relationship, and that's true. So this isn't an exhaustive list, but these were some of the things that I think are extremely important in a relationship. So like I said earlier, if you're listening to this, uh, and I, and I, I, really try and give this instruction to our young people who are getting into relationships. You heard me say it earlier, set the standard. Set the standard for what you're going to accept in a relationship. And when that standard's not met, you really have to work through, you've got to reconcile that. Would you say it possible? You have to evaluate the relationship. You've got to genuinely evaluate the relationship because, again, what happens is when you set the standard, what you're saying is this is what I'm worth. Yeah. And I want us to be mindful. It's uh, our men and women. You are worth something. God values Amen. you. You are not a doormat for somebody to walk over you. God has equipped you. That's why the scripture says in Psalms 139, we are fearfully and what? Wonderfully, Wonderfully made. made. And the reality is, if I accept a person doing anything to me, guess what they're going to do? do they're going to do anything to me. Yeah. And so this, this lesson, I can relate talks about, one, how God relates to us, yeah. but then how we should relate to our fellow human beings. And so I'm going to jump into some things that I, I want to just touch on. Deacon Preston. Yes, please. I want to make a comment about that communication piece. Okay, um, go right ahead. This is something I'm, I'm learning. That communication piece also is understanding how that other person receives information. That's right. Because it's because it's not just me stating how I feel. I also have to take the time to hear how that person process information. Because if I'm not careful, you could be so much. You're the expert in the matter, but they may not understand what you're saying. Yeah. So I always liken, and Sister Charmaine, I appreciate your point. I always liken it to this: everyone doesn't learn the same way. They just don't. And everyone doesn't hear or communicate the same way. Yeah. And so we've got to be mindful. So I, I'm glad you brought that out, Sister Charmaine. It's really important that we understand. And so uh, my wife and I will celebrate 26 years of marriage this year. And the reality is we communicate very differently. We, we just, we, we do. But the beauty is over our time in growing and maturing, She's learned, okay, let me say this very clearly to Walter, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'm just being honest, you know, she, she has to make sure she spells things out for me because I can go from A to Z really quick, but my wife is not an A to Z person. My wife is an A, B, C person. I'll go to A, to H, to Z, back to B, and Ooh. she's like, no, 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 um, you... It, I would really like for you to go A, B, C. So to Sister Charmaine's point, understanding how each other communicates, that's why when I talked about the things that are important into a relationship, it's open communication. Did I hear you correctly when you said that? Um, Walter, the hamper is right there. Your socks just need to go in the hamper. They don't need to go outside the hamper. And so in my mind, they're going to get washed anyway. So does it really matter where they go? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Right? Come it on, gen Becky. It, it generally but, does. Please, please. But, but I got to tell Becky, so I got to tell Sister Becky, 26 years, the next 26, it ain't going to change. Hey, it, it is Some so days <laughs> the socks will be in the hamper. And some days the socks are not going to be in the hamper. Hey, after that, that's just the way it is. I, Jane and I could be celebrating 52 years <laughs> hey, next month. And guess what? Some days the socks are in the hamper, <laughs> and some days they're not. <laughs> hey, Deacon Press. Yeah, please. This is Brother Jones. Hey, Brother Jones. How y'all doing this morning? Happy Sabbath. Doing Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Well. Since we're on this communication thing, um, what about communication when people are trying to communicate with you? They got this texting going on now. What? Texting? And, texting. And, I, and texting. I, I'm a type of person that when you're going to ask me to do something for you or to lend you money or to like that, 
I, I prefer for you people to call me because I can understand when I'm listening to that voice and, and I'm talking to them, I can understand that they need other money or, or the situation that they're in. But a lot of people like to text people a lot now <laughs> in the communication and you can't get, get that feeling from what, what the communications are about. They could be over there texting and laughing and, you know, back and forth. But you know, Digger, uh, Brother Jones, let me just say this. That's generational. Yeah, that's generational. Because, I, I know, and, and, yeah. and I, you know, even at my age, when I'm dealing with young people, I know that I'm going to have to text and communicate with them through text. I don't care how much I would prefer <laughs> to talk to them over the phone or person to person, yeah. the way they communicate. Yeah. And that's what's back to what Sister Charmaine was saying earlier. Right. I need to know how the other person communicate. If they want to communicate with texting, well, thanks God I know how to text. So my whole point is, Sometimes we have to do what they want to do right. for the um, to to just keep the keep it flowing. And once we recognize that, it's easier. Yeah, I, I, right. brother Jones, I, I appreciate that point. But but again, I think that's something generational. So think about um, ten years ago. I don't even think we had Twitter. And so the reality is, when you think about, and I think they've expanded their character number. But when you're thinking that you can communicate in 120 characters, uh, m my wife will tell you. For the most part, when, when I think about interacting with our children and young adults, they prefer to text. Yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out their emojis. I'm still trying to figure out uh, their little, you know, it took me a long time just to understand what TY was. And then someone said, it's thank you. And I was like, oh, good. Well, I'm, at least I know that, right? And so some people are looking at me like with this face. But again, it's that part of communication, preference on communication, how you communicate. And now let's think about this as we, as we talk about relationships, because this is really important. And I want to make sure we pull some of this away from this lesson today. The first thing we talked about was trust. So the reality I want us to be mindful of as we look at the scripture, I always like to say this, we can trust God. So why can I trust God? I want you to think about scripturally, why can you trust God? Two scriptures, and, and you can just write these down. The reality is when we think about relationships and trust, I can trust God because God does not lie. Right. The scripture says um, God is not a man, Numbers 29, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He have said it, and he shall, he shall not do it, or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So the reality is, if God says it, it's going to come to pass, I can trust him because his character is he does not lie. And when think about this, if you're in a relationship with someone who was, will always tell you the truth, isn't that a good relationship? It is. Even if I don't want to hear it, even if I don't like what they say, I say it all the time. The people who love you the most will tell you the truth 100% of the time, even when you don't want to hear it, even when it hurts your feelings, they will tell you the truth, right? And so the reality is... I trust God because he does not lie. The other reason I can genuinely trust God is because one of his uh, attributes is he's always faithful. And so think about, wouldn't you want to be in a relationship with somebody who's always faithful? I don't have to worry about where they are, what they do, they're doing. And so Paul picks this up in 2 Timothy 2.13. He says, if we are faithless, he remains what? Faithful. Why? Before he cannot disown himself. So it is part of his character to be faithful. So I want us to think about that. If I'm in a relationship, in relationship with God, and I want us to think about this dynamic in this lesson today. When you think about how you're relating to God, and I always say you've got relationships that are vertical and then you've got horizontal relationships. But as I think about my relationship with God, the question I would have for us is, can God trust me? Because I can't trust him. <laughs> the other question we should ask is, am I faithful to God? Because I know he's faithful to me. Yes. And so as we think about relationships, one of the first things we talked about is trust. So I want us to be, I want us to understand that. The next thing I want us to talk about is God listens to us. Now, um, we, we talk about this from the standpoint of, and in human dynamic and human relationships, it is so important for us to understand uh, listening 
making sure people feel heard, making sure you completely, uh, you're getting a good understanding of somebody because it is so important in our relationships that we uh, feel like we are being listened to and heard. So some scripture reference I want to give and then I'll open it up. I'll give it over to you, Apostle, for thoughts and comments. The psalmist wrote in Psalms 18 and 6, he says, I, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Yeah. And my cry came before him even into his ears. So I want us to think about that. In our relationship with God, when we think about can I relate in our relationship with our fellow man, it's so important that we listen because God actually listens to us. Another scripture, Psalms 118, 21, it says, I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. And then the last scripture, and then I'll open it up for conversation. We, we read 2 Chronicles a lot and we'll focus on verse 14, but I, wanna, I want us to understand the context of it. Solomon had just dedicated the temple. He had dedicated the temple of God, mm -hmm. and God had blessed him, and David had, had, had stored supplies and had worked to get supplies, but God allowed Solomon to build the temple. And then we find this in, in verse uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 11 and 14 through 14, it says, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make it the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. He says, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and this is what we say a lot, if my people, which are called by my name, so humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I what? Hear. I will what? Hear from heaven. Hear from where? From heaven. Heaven. And he says, and will forgive them their what? Sin. And then he says, I'll promise this. I will actually do what? Heal their land. So think about this. As we think about this dynamic of relationship, and this isn't all encompassing. But some of, we've got to set the standard. If a good relationship, trust. So I know I can trust God because he, uh, he cannot lie and he's faithful. Uh, when I think about good relationship, uh, someone that listens to me because I feel like I'm, I want to be heard. I, it's so important to be heard. I've got a God that listens to me and not just listens passively, but he actively hears what I'm saying. He wants to, he wants to hear from me. That's why it's so important when you look in the scripture, think about what Jesus did. The scripture says early in the morning, Jesus would actually go away from everybody else. And what would he do? He would pray. Why? Because he wanted to communicate, but he also wanted to make sure he heard from the father and that they had open communication. So it's so important that we understand. David talks about in the scripture, I would meditate early in the morning. Why? Because I wanted to actually spend time with God. So, apostles, we talk about this thing about I can relate in relationships in those first two, trust and listening. What are your thoughts? And I see we got comments, and I want to get to the comments. Why are those things so important? You know, we knew before coming to Christ, we knew or had an idea what a good relationship looked like. Okay. You know, we, we had friends. We have interactions. And... And from those, even from very young children, we kind of um, got our mind wrapped around what a good relationship would look like or should look like. But we were disappointed growing up with the relationships. We were disappointed with our interactions. And finally, we come to Christ. <laughs> and guess what? Everything that we expected in a good relationship, he offers to us. Wow. Okay. I can relate because I know what a good relationship should look like. I didn't get it. I didn't always get it coming up. I had some hit and misses. But when I came to Christ, all of my relationships were good. 
Everything, in, and we were talking about earlier, he hears me. If I talk, he hears me. If I got questions, he hears me. He knows the intent of my heart. He knows my feelings. The scripture, he knows my down setting. He knows my uprising. Everything about me, he knows. And from that, I know I can have a good relationship with him. Amen. I can relate. Amen. So I'll stop. I any thoughts, comments, questions as we think about this lesson? I can relate. Uh, why is it so important? So if you're making notes, what I would say from this lesson, one of the first things I would write down, and this ties into my human relationships especially, is make sure you set the standard, okay? That's one thing I, I really want you to walk away with, um, and I'd say this, in any relationship, but especially as our young people, as you're getting into mm. relationship, set the standard for what you want out of the relationship. That is so, so important, and I think it's really, re I want us to be really mindful of that uh, because again, when we think about our relationship with God, there are things that we can we can we can trust Him. Uh, we can trust God. He's going to listen to us. And I'll go through two or three other things. But I want us to be mindful as I was preparing for this lesson, and, and Elder Brand gave a lot of scriptures. But I wanted to make sure as you walk away from this lesson, what's the application that I can have? And one application would be set the standard in your relationship. Because if you don't, someone else will set the standard for you. And you've got to be very mindful of that. So any comments or questions before we go to our next our next set Dick, of thoughts? Yeah. Dick and Preston. Yep. yep. Go ahead. I have one. Is somebody saying something? No, go ahead. We can meet the sister in the audience after you finish. Okay, so can we go to um, 2 Corinthians? We Okay, I hear that scripture a lot, if my people call by my name. 2 Chronicles? Okay. Yeah, second. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said Corinthians. Yeah, Second Chronicles. Okay, so in that scripture, am I misunderstanding? In that scripture, this is one time God finds favor in what the work that people were doing. Am I misunderstanding that? When you say the work in the people and what the people were doing, I mean, I, mean, I said that He found favor. God was pleased. Yeah, you're right. That's right. So He God he, was. Yeah, he was, he was pleased in this scripture. So then he says, well, if I send the locusts, if I send the, um, hold on. if I send the locusts, if I send the rain, because of my relationship with you, if you are walking in my ways, if you humble yourself, if you stay away from wicked, then I will answer the things you say. Yeah, so Am I understanding the context of that? Yeah, so think, think about this, what, what's happening in this scripture. Solomon has built the temple. He has, and, 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 and he's asking Could God, you pull your mic closer to you? you so closer. Solomon has built the temple. And can someone turn my mic up, please, if you don't mind? Solomon has built it. He has dedicated it. And now he's in the situation where he is asking God, God is coming in saying, Solomon, I am pleased that you followed the instructions. instructions. And because you followed the instructions, if all these bad things were to happen, all you have to do because of our relationship is all you got to do is what? Turn. Call. Yeah. All you got to do is call on my name. And so when you yeah. think about relationship, think about this when you consider a friend. If, if you ever had a good friend, when you in your worst situation, you know there's somebody, I call them a 2 a.m. friend. Everybody should have a 2 a.m. friend. My wife will tell you the other day before we got on the road, it was early in the morning. And I got a call from somebody and he said, I knew you would answer because you are my friend. And he said, I'm struggling with something and I need your help. That's the same, come on somebody, that's the same thing with God. When I'm struggling with something, when I'm frustrated with something, when I'm disappointed with something, you've heard the same say, you can call and win in the midnight hour. So a 2 a.m. friend is not just to pick you up there in the you, bar. There you go. All right. I'm not going to fool with you. <laughs> right? Yeah, sister. Yeah. And I think that's, a, I, I want to get the question.
question, but I, I think Sister Charmaine's point is a good one because of the relationship that the people of God, not just Solomon, the people of God, this was a promise to Israel. Yes. That if they were in a, in a bond, what he was actually saying was, all you need to do. You remember the, uh, there used to be a commercial with Staples, and it was the easy button. You just, man, that was easy? Yeah. That's what this is. He's like, man, that's easy. All I got to do is call. Yes. And God responds. So, Sister Charmaine, thank you for that point. We've got a question from the audience. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Good morning. I don't like to talk. But um, for me, I found that, you know, it's good to set a standard, but you got to learn how to set a standard. Okay. Some girls are not raised with fathers and different things that they need to learn. So it's easy to for us to say that. But for me, it wasn't. What I learned that I had unexpected expectations mm. of what I wanted out of a mate, whether I watch love stories or whatever the case may be, you read love books, you kind of fix in your mind a Harlequin what you're going to get, and that's unrealistic. <laughs> so it's easy to you know, say that, but I work with teens, I work with young adults, and sometimes they have a fantasy of what it's going to be when they go in it because there's nobody that taught them along the way, so they make it up along the way. So that's what, for me, is needed more for young girls to come up under understanding what my standard is because if you don't love yourself, you, don't, you can't set a standard for yourself if you don't even know who you are. So... That's important for me that they learn, like I teach my daughter, you have to love you. If you don't love you, you're going to accept anything. That's right. And so you can teach that and teach that, but you got to live it so they can see that you don't take stuff, that you, you give them an example to go from, because sometimes we just put stuff out there, and the youth today don't understand that. They don't get that. Old school, you hold on, you put up with a lot of shenanigans that you don't need to put up with, and you go through a lot of stuff, been there, done that, and you do it because this is what you're supposed to do. But I was never taught. So you learn through hurt before you learn what to do the right way. And then now the age I am, I have a standard. But I can't say I grew up with it. I'm going to be honest because I didn't have no one to tell me what is a standard. So that's important that the young ladies and young men know how to treat a woman, how to talk to a woman, how to speak to a woman. And they only get that from examples around them who they see doing it to others. That's, it. that's such a good point because, you know, those who are in church and have good leadership if, it, if it's lacking in the home, the church should pick it up. It should, they should identify that. And they, they, women, young women especially, should be able to look at men in the church and say, this is what I, I, I should expect, you know, rather than, and unfortunately, sometimes in the church, you got much crazies going on in the church you got in the world. So you think, okay, I've been to church and this is what I see, so this must be the standard. Then you get out there and you, like you said, you make some mistakes, you do some things until you really realize what, what standard am I setting? Where's the, where am I setting the bar? And my expectation is based upon what? Because a lot of people have set the bar to something that's not real. And they get disappointed time after time after time because then they got to say that somebody got to work with them to say, look, your expectation is not real. And then, and then now they have a realistic expectation. And now you're, you come beneath that, there's nothing here for us. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that though. I, I, wanna, I, I, I really want to talk about I, because I think that's important. Because, uh, so I have this saying, my children have heard this, more is caught than talk. Yeah, and I'm a big believer in. Doesn't matter how close I'm getting, but uh, more is caught than taught. And so I, I've shared this before. I caught my father working hard. He didn't have to really teach me about it. I just saw him doing it every day. I saw him pray every day. I saw him read his Bible every day. And it wasn't like, hey, Walter Jr., you need to read your Bible. But I watched his behavior, and that's yeah. why, you know, I've told um, different people as I've gone through some things, my heart genuinely goes out for young men, especially today, mm -hmm. from the standpoint of in a certain demographic of young men, because the reality is when you have a system that is stacked against you from the time that you were born, there has to be a reality of you need to make sure that you are above reproach that you carry yourself in such a way. That's why, in my mind, you have to be 
uh, this, this man of God that walks this way because if you don't, your opportunities in this world are not like everybody else's. That's right. You don't have doors opening for you like everybody else. And so you've got to work twice as hard. You've got to do some things that are different. That's why it's so important, I believe, in the body of Christ that we model behavior to where people can say, you know what, I may not agree with Deacon Preston on everything, but man, he's living the life. Amen. I may not, and that's why I say this thing is we think about relationship. You may not see it in your home, but I'm always prayerful that you will see it somewhere where you can walk away and say, you know what, I may not have it at home, but I see that woman of God. That's why Paul admonished that the young women should learn from who? The older women. They should learn from the older women. They should learn these things in a biblical way, and I think the sister said it. They shouldn't learn that I should just tolerate anything. I shouldn't learn these, you know, you can do anything to me and, and God's okay with it. No, that's not what, and this lesson really touches on that. And I don't know if we'll get to all of it because even Jesus talks about this in John chapter 13. He says, people will know you are my disciples. Why? Because you, you have, have love. love one for another. You know, dig a precedent. Yeah. That go back to Sister Kena's first point. That's it. You know, somebody telling you um, that man should not be alone. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, telling you from his own perspective and the why behind it. If you don't have a standard, if you don't know what the truth of that thing is, um, then you could find yourself being carried off by what they are saying rather than by what you, what you know. And I'm glad um, that she's asking that kind of question because, yeah, we want to let you know that, no, that's not what God intends. Because if you th if, now if these people uh, think can convince you that then you just become whatever they want you to be, and you know that's why you have sister wives and all this stuff today because somebody um, uh, that's why people become a side chick. Why? Because somebody is saying that it's okay, and the man is convincing, trying to convince the woman that you know I I'm, I shouldn't be alone, and this one doesn't satisfy me to the, the to the intent or the level that I want to be satisfied, and it's okay for me to have somebody else. Oh, and that somebody just happened to be you. You said, no, 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 that's not my standard. That's right. You know, I'm not going to be number two. I'm not going to be your side piece. You know why? Because I know better. I have, I have a standard that if you're not going to come up to it, then you need to keep stepping. I, I'm gonna t we got to keep Apostle off Facebook. I didn't think he knew side chick. <laughs> it, it, it's always dangerous when you know these words that come up. I'm always like, how old are you again? But you know, side chick been around before there was Facebook. <laughs> You say it's been out. It's been out there, right? It's been out there when I was in school. So that's fifty some years ago, <laughs> before they even texted, <laughs> before there were cell phones. <laughs> you say it was side chick was already side out there. chick always been out there. <laughs> Amen. So again, as we think about this, and I want us to be very mindful of the fact. So we didn't get through all of our scriptures, but I want us to be mindful of some things in this lesson. When you think about good relationships, we talked about trust, we talked about listening, we talked about open communication, we talked about um, commitment. And so I, I want us to think through, and um, there's one section in here that Elder Brand talked about, and I'll, finish, I'll go through that. Um, he talks about friends. You see, God will show being a friend. Or is there anything? No, no, not just, I'm glad you said that because this is the thing. As I was reading his caption, you know, he says, first, how does a holy God relate to us? He loves us. That's the question, right? right. God listens attentively to us. God sacrifices for us. God calls us sons. And what you're going to now, God calls us friend. That's how he relates to us. No, and I think that's so important for us to understand that is um, how he relates to us. And then as we wrap this lesson up, I think it's important. How do we relate to God? Mm. Um, but but the other thing I think is equally important is how do we relate to one another? Right. Because in, in, in uh, I think it's first John, uh, one of the epistles of John, John talks about, you know what, how can you love God? Whom you never seen. Who you've never what? Seen. You've never laid eyes on him. And hate your brother that you see all the time. Digger Preston, you 
in that verse, it uses a word that we shy away from as saints. Hate. <laughs> we act like we don't hate, and we should not. We act like people in the church don't hate. But I have to say, why is that scripture written? It wasn't written to the world. That's right. That scripture was on, not written to the world. That scripture was written to the saints. That scripture was written to the people of God. Let's call it what it is. You hate the person. Wow. And that might be another lesson. It may be. <laughs> we got to understand. No, but that's good. We got to understand that I just don't like them. I just know you hate them. Mm. And it wasn't for your fear of the... <laughs> of... of, of of the world system we live in, the legal system, and what about your fear of how the saints will look at you, you will act on your hatred. God does not yeah. want his people to hate. Mm. You say you love me? That's right. You ain't never seen me, but you hate, and that's a strong word, but, the, but the, he strong. said you hate your brother. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so I love that. So we, I, I want to stay there because I think that is so important because if that is happening amongst the saints. What Jesus is saying, you're really not my disciple. Right. And what he's also saying is you're really not in relationship with me. Right. And so when we think about that, and, and, and I love that you brought that up, hate is such a strong word. Yeah. And if I hate someone, in, especially in the body of Christ, if I hate them, what I'm genuinely saying is... Um, I am not in relationship mm. with the God of the universe. Now. And I want to think about that. That is so important for us to understand. So I'm glad you touched on that. But that's why we don't use the term hate. Because wow. if we say hate, it kicks us out of relationship. Mm -hmm. right. So we want to stay in relationship and, and want to call the hatred we have for the brothers and sisters something else. Amen. That's good. Yes, Lord. Lady. Thank the Lord for that word, um, hate. Because hate, um, Cain hated his brother so much he murdered him. Now, there you go. Hate is strong, and it, if it stays there long enough, it's going to uh, affect, and it's going to act. That's right. So hate is a different thing. You can associate them together, and when you associate them together, that'll show you, get away from hate. That's right. That's right. We got to understand, that's, and I thank you, Sister Edith. We got to understand that if we have any inkling of hating somebody in the body of Christ, I got to do some work. I got to do some quick, fast, and a hurry. I got to do something to get myself out of that place of hatred and not trying to justify what it is. Yeah, I love that point. I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad you brought oh. that up. Any oh, awesome. No, go ahead. Apostle, hi. Good, good, good afternoon and happy Sabbath. This is the Sister Minnie Turner. God bless you, um, before, the, before hate, we have to realize that jealousy and envy creeps in. See, and we don't see the hate in the beginning. That's right. But it builds, it builds up. Behind being jealous and envious of others, then hate comes in. And that's the go. strongest one. Yeah. That yeah. is so true, Sister Minnie. Yeah, such a great point. Thank you for that, Sister Minnie. And so I would ask us to really think about this as, as we're going to look at one more scripture as we go through it, that I want us to be mindful of, all right, how do I apply this as I move forward in our relationships? Um, I always love the perspective that you bring in Sabbath school. So the sister who brought that, that comment up, I really, I value that. And I think that's a good one that, you know, we want you to set the standard, but if you don't know what the standard looks like, so making sure we set realistic standards. So I, I value what you said. I love what Sister Kina said at the beginning, seeking the clarity on that. Uh, and then Sister Charmaine brought up some points. But as we wrap up this lesson, I want us to look at it twofold. What is my relationship with God? Um, because I think so many times we can get in a routine. The danger of relationships sometimes is that I can take it for granted. Have you ever watched people who've been together a long time and they happen to take things for granted? Oh, yes. Um, so I always like to say this because I, I'm vulnerable. Um, my, my wife has trained me so well over the time that we've been together. Uh, she really has. She's done a really good job. And she will say to me periodically, like she did this week, um, 
I don't know if you understand all that I do. I was like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> but, it, but it was a really good point because I'm doing all these things in the relationship. And she's doing all these other things. And I'm thinking all that I'm doing is really important. But everything she's doing is just as important. Amen. Yeah. And the reality in relationships. So the reason I share that is in our own human dynamic and our relationships with each other. One, we can take things for granted. So we've got to be sure we don't take our relationship with God for granted. But we also have to be sure we don't take our relationship with each other for That's granted. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the power of friendship, the power of relationships is so important. And so as we think about this thing, and, and I'm going to read one more scripture, but I want you to think about, we said relationships, trust, listening, love, commitment, open communication. You, you know, <laughs> press, yes, go. yesterday I um, talked about take it for one another for granted. And I know I hadn't done a lot, but my hip has really been bothering me this week. And I, I try to stay away from, you know, taking medications and pain medicine and whatnot, just over the counter stuff. And, and I know my wife was cooking and doing different things. She had run to the store and I said, I said, honey, you want me to help you? I mean, I, you know, I cook a little bit. So she said, no, you just stay right on that sofa and do you. <laughs> Jane, okay. <laughs> I do exactly. <laughs> I do exactly what, what that did. She said, "No, you just let that soap and do you." Yeah, she laid it out pretty good too, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, as we wrap up, and I love that, and then we'll get to Sister uh, Timmy, uh, John fifteen, John chapter fifteen, verse twelve through seventeen. And I really want us to think about this, um, how God loves us and how we should love each other. He says, this is my commandment. And this is Jesus actually talking. He says that you love one another as I've loved you. And then verse 13, he says something that I, I think is so powerful. Mm. He says, greater love. Have no man than this. That a man laid down his life for who? His friends. His friends. And, and, and then he says, you are my friends. You're my friends. If you do whatever I command you to do, he said, henceforth, I call you not servants. He said, so now the relationship shifts. Because I want you to think about, in the relationship of servant, it is master-servant. So the master's always here. And the servant is never going to be equal to his master, really. But then Jesus shifts this relationship, and he says, I don't call you servants anymore. He said, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord does. But now he says, but I have called you friends. But it comes with a, a price. Yes. Because he says, if you do whatever, whatsoever, I That's command right. you. You're my friend. You're not just my friend because you say so. I'm a friend of God. I'm That's a right. friend of God. No, you are my friend mm. because you do what I command you. And I think people miss that piece sometimes right. when they're talking about friendship. And so as we think about this dynamic, uh, he says here, for all things that I've heard of my father, I made known to you. And then he says, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. So watch how, and, and we'll close out here. At the beginning of verse 12, he says, this is my commandment, that you do what? You love one, love another. one another. And then in verse 17, he says, these things I command you, that you what? You love one another. And Apostle, I love as we wrap this up, as we talk about relationships and we talk about um, a friend, here Jesus says, and I love the point that you brought out, if you do what I say you're going to do, I ask you to do, you're now in a relationship right. of friendship. Uh, I was, as I was studying the lesson, I believe it was Moses, that Moses was a friend of God and he talked to God um, face to face. face -to -face. 
And so as we think about that piece, and I want to get Sister Tamine, and I know you've got a comment that you make. I want us to think as we wrap up this lesson today, one, how is your relationship with God? And, and give an honest assessment. And then from there, how is your relationship with the people of God? Because that's so important as we navigate our relationships. In this lesson, I can relate. How do I relate to God? And then how do I also relate to the people of God? So, Apostle, I'm going to get your comments. And then, uh, Sister, to me, we thank God for you coming down with gas prices like they are. God bless you for that. <laughs> Amen. That alone, we got to tell God thank you. So, Z. Apostle, go right ahead. And then, sister. Now, I just wanted to comment on, on something that I thought about earlier. And I see Brother um, Eric Hickens made this statement and somebody um, um, else commented on it. It said, you have to have God in you to have a good relationship. And one of the things that um, uh, Elder Brand had mentioned, he said, you have to have the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. I mean, if you have a relationship, a good relationship, you got to have the fruit of the spirit because without those, your relationship is never going to be right. what, what God wants it to be. Amen. Amen. Sister. Amen. Oh, I was thinking about um, when we talked about being careful that we don't take those relationships for granted because right. I'm in with God, right? Mm -hmm. And so making sure, and I think we talked about this in one of our um, Bible lessons last week or so, and we talked about the need to repent. Mm -hmm. That, you know, when you are in relationship, you're quick to say you're sorry yeah. when you're wrong. And it's what we do with God, right? So we never take for granted that, and people use expressions like, oh, he knows how I am, <laughs> right? And so then that, somehow convinces them that they need not repent. But the reality is that that's another, you know, indication of true relationship. True relationship says it's sorry when you, when you, when you need to do that. That you never take God for granted and presume that we got it like that. Me and him are tight like that. He knows how I am, and so I do a little dirt, and I just move on with it <laughs> as opposed to stopping. But I also just, I, I'm, I'm loving the lesson because I'm seeing the tie-in to what we talked about even last night, Apostle, when we mm -hmm. talked about our relationships with our sisters and our brothers, and not just the ones in the church, but our natural sisters and brothers, how those relationships can be challenged. Yeah. And so I just praise God for today's lesson and everything that we're talking about with regard to good relationships. Good relationships. Amen. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. We, we want to thank you again for just engaging with us in Sabbath school. And, and again, as I sit here and listen and engage with you, um, you help me learn. And as we prepare for lessons, we don't have all the answers. We don't know all the questions. But our prayer is that we would give you things to apply in your daily life. I'm a big believer uh, about application. How do we apply it so that we get better? Because I look at it like this. I want to hear him say, well done. Amen. My good and faithful servant. Uh, and so that's what our desire is. So with that, I'm going to put it into the hands of our sister Charmaine. And I know after that, she will give it to our apostle. Again, thank you for your time today and thank you for your engagement. God bless you, sister Charmaine. Amen. We do praise God for the Sabbath school lesson. It was such a beautiful lesson. Dig and Preston, um, would you be so kind to share your presentation today? Because there were some nuggets in there that I need to be able to go back and kind of process and I do that often, even with the word of God, when apostle preaches, sometimes you just have to go back and, and read what was taught so you can um, get it in there real good. But we thank the Lord for the Sabbath school today. Thank you for tuning in, uh, being a part of the Sabbath school lesson. I really appreciate uh, the impression and apostle James, their vulnerability today. Um, I, I thank God for that. Amen. Um, and, uh, Amen. Uh, <laughs> The uh, Sister Becky and Lady Jan, I know we are praying with you that <laughs> see, they're going to get those see, socks in the basket. See, <laughs> see, the Pastor Jay said oh, after 26 now. years, it's not going to change. We're going to believe that they're going to they gonna get those socks in the basket. <laughs> and, uh, and you all won't have to worry about that no more. But we praise God for the Sabbath school this morning. And I want to ask this one question. I asked this last Sabbath. And will somebody come off a mute uh, mute today and just share, what did you hear? What did you hear today? What did you hear? Just one person. Well, maybe two. Anybody going to be courageous? What about in the audience in the sanctuary there? 
just share something. What did you hear today? Because that's one of the the um, the approaches that we take. You know, we talk about uh, what is the lesson saying to you, and I know sometimes those things are personal. What you how you're receiving it, but is there one that was shared yes, today? Me, what did you? Me, good morning. Yes. This yes. Yes. Uh huh, brother I, Joe. I heard and and. I heard that you have, you have to have God in your relationship and you got to have a give and take. It, it ain't all about you. It's all about being truthful and being understanding the other person. The other person might not do everything that, that, that you expect of them, but you got to understand that, that, that they have situations too. And y'all got to have a, a listening ear for each other. Yeah. That, Amen. Um, that you, you definitely got to have God in, in, in the relationship. And when you're dealing with God and your friend, you have to be truthful. Amen. You have to be to to the point and, and, and that wishy washy, you know. Yeah, that's what I get for the lesson. All right, very good. Thank you so much, um, Digging where Brother Jones for sharing what you heard today. So I know our time is well spent, and so I'm going to close on my portion of the Sabbath school. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. You could have chose to be somewhere else, but you chose to be with us. Amen. And so we thank you for that. So Apostle, the service is now in your hands. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Charmaine. And thank you, Deacon Preston. We also thank our, our Elder Brand for coming in on the, at the beginning. And some of you who may have started off, um, when you may have just tuned in when he was talking and did not know who, who he was, he was actually he is the author of this particular lesson, and um, so he came on and gave his perspective. And given his perspective, even though I had read the lesson, given his perspective was a help to me to kind of uh, put things in perspective. So uh, I thank God for him, and again, thank God for all of you. Um, Digan Preston said earlier that he's big on application, and that is so true because we can have these lessons and Bible studies and all these other things. If we never apply mm -hmm. the principles that we learn, what good are we? I mean, what good is it for us? It's not doing us any good. It sounds good, good conversation. But if I don't apply principles, I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. And I know all of us desire to grow. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let us come back um, this afternoon. We're, good. We're looking for a high time in the Lord. We're asking God to make his presence known among us today. I don't know what the Lord wants to do. But I do want to be a willing vessel, and I and I just want the, the service to flow in a way that whatever God has ordained for us today, it will happen. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen the way He had ordained for it to happen, the way He wanted it to happen. We're just we just have the doors we just have the doors open. God is the one that dictates what takes place. That's right. So let us continue to pray for one another. And again, we thank you and looking forward to the time that we come back. We repeat the watchword and be back at one o'clock. And I was just and I was looking at those who was in attendance today. I saw one of my cousins that I may have been on before, but I had not taken note of that. And I thank God for, I won't call his name, but I just thank God for him uh, being a part of this Sabbath school lesson this morning. I trust he stayed. I don't know how long he stayed, but we thank God for you. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we'll absent one from another. In Jesus' name, amen.